This goes home with Charge Conversation at Art Prize. I am Todd. I'm Kevin. And we just got back off the road from going to Pitch Night in North Carolina, where we heard five artists pitch ideas uh, for Art Prize 8. We're going to re review each one of the artist's proposals, and we're going to take you through, show you some images, some clips from their actual pr uh, proposal in Durham. And uh, we'll let you know at the end which one of the artists won the $5,000 grant and the secured location for this proposal for Pitch Night Durham. It's a typical office space that would be in downtown Grand Rapids. Uh, they were given sort of L-shaped kind of dimensions to work around. So they were given the, the, the parameters of the venue. And here's the pitches that they sent to us. The first artist to present that night his name is Brian Gonzalez. He is a research fellow at a print shop in Durham, North Carolina, and for the past six years has been researching technology when it comes to uh, technology and in ink when it comes to his fine art applications and presented a concept around thermodynamic ink, I think mm -hmm. it was, right? Yeah. Um, and, and the way that, that kids and participants can interact with it. What did you think of that, that piece, Kevin? I thought it was pretty cool. And Brian actually, so this is the second time we've done Pitch Night in Durham, and Brian uh, pitched a very different project last year. So it was very cool to see him back with a different idea. Um, yeah, so his, you know, his presentation he talked about, you know, this uh, is very interactive. He had had bowls of water, um, paint brushes, so people could come up and kind of like, make these temporary markings. Right, um, so you, it would react to the heat of your skin, yeah. but also you could add you know, a hair dryer, or you can paint it with water to create yeah. really striking contrast within it. Yeah, and, and he, like, he related it to, um, you know, he showed images of 35,000-year-old uh, you know, cave paintings with um, you know, sort of shadow paintings of people's hands mm -hmm. that uh, still exist on caves, which looks an awful lot like the mark you make when you put your hand on this thermal ink, um, which I thought was pretty cool. Yep. Um, the like you know if I like my one criticism of it is like uh, the technology is cool but I'm not sure that the installation did a lot. Well, hold on, with, other than hold on with your it. harsh critique. Let's let's take a moment. Let's let's hear a little bit from Brian first. Uh, is going to be uh, a large, approximately 40 foot, uh, four panels, four by eight panels on risers with the water and paint brushes. That's essentially the project. Uh, so you had a critique. You had a critique. What did you what did you feel about his work? I like this project, and I think that people would have a lot of fun with it. But I, I did think, uh, like the technology is really cool, but it's mm -hmm. the the installation is not doing a lot beyond highlighting that technology. Right. All right. Moving on to our next artist, Stacy Kirby. Stacy Kirby's work combines installation and performance. And for our prize eight, she proposed installing a validation and declaration bureaucracy in the heart of downtown Grand Rapids to determine the worth of our community members. How dare this artist from North Carolina think she can stroll into Grand Rapids, Michigan and determine the worth of our community. Kevin, what do you think? Well, that's the shtick, of course. Let's take a moment, let's listen to what Stacy has to say about the work. So these two projects will be happening at either end of the 200 Ottawa location in Grand Rapids. They will be bridged by the Identity Corridor, which is a project that has over 150 rubber, uh, rubber stamps that are customized from responses that I've received over the past 10 years about identity. And then I'll be working with the LGBT community in Grand Rapids to perform my work while I'm not there during the week so they can in turn validate their own community as well as the visitors to Art Prize. She's not as she wouldn't she wouldn't necessarily consider herself an activist, but um, she but her her work absolutely you know speaks to the role of act, you know activism around uh, equal rights. When you're oh, experiencing, I, I, think she, I think she might consider herself an activist. Oh, yeah. I, I wouldn't put that label on her unless she wanted to claim it for herself. But mm -hmm. um, but I think she definitely exists in this vein of artists that intentionally blur that line right um, between sort of art as representation and then politics as direct action. And I think there's a thing happening, and I think that her work is part of this, where um, artists are really beginning to question that distinction. Mm. And, uh, and art should act directly in the world mm -hmm. rather than you know, sort of make metaphors or make representations. Moving along to our next artist, Ilisai Prudy. Her installation pitch seeks to ex excavate the language that we use to construct the categories of race. This was a really, uh, a really passionate uh, pitch that I think drew people in uh, even from the very beginning, what seemed to be, to, to the perception of the audience, a white artist pitching a, a project about the vernacular that surrounds race. I thought that was compelling to get going. You had to dig just a little bit deeper to find yeah. out her story yeah. uh, to give that context of it. How did this piece strike you, Kevin? 
I thought it was great. I, I thought it was um, a really powerful, powerful project, and it's uh, again one of those ones where you know art and activism are really blurring. And um, you know, I won't attempt to reiterate uh, the artist's kind of personal story that led her into this type of work because mm -hmm. we can uh, we can show that. My piece has two components. The first is a series of paper bags, open flat, coated with the colors that reference skin tone. Each bag is stamped with a label at the top. The second component will be an audio piece built of readings of the bags from different locations. Beyond the wall of bags, there will be a place to sit together and listen to these longer meditations on each word. Um, I felt like the display of it was really aesthetically just elegant mm -hmm. and would draw you into something that you, a project that you think is playing with, you know, uh, it's playing with ideas of hue when it comes mm -hmm. to color as opposed yep. to race and then, and then being drawn into it and you're sort of then forced to reckon with what she's trying to say and her yeah. story, which, I th which uh, really spoke to me and I, I appreciated that work. Yeah, and I, I, th I thought, um, I think that the, as, as we've done this more, we've seen more and more people who like take the form of a, a quick five minute lecture and do really do something with that, um, which is really cool to see. It was. All right, moving along. Uh, two artists, our fourth uh, artist pitch for Pitch Night Durham, Nate Schaefer and Kim Wheaton. Uh, Kim Wheaton is a, is a painter and mixed media artist and is fascinated how a line can create form, movement, and energy. Movement is critical to this piece. And so she worked in collaboration with a guy, a self-proclaimed neon master. Um, I think others would agree. He works a lot in, in neon light. Um, and they, uh, the proposed entry intends to transform the venue from a drab, utilitarian office space uh, that many of us would avoid, unlike this. We love this <laughs> tiny office space, um, and into a dance party. But the, the concept was a dance party. And uh, the artist uh, worked to choreograph a dance between two people. Um, Essentially, it felt like it was going to be surrounded by. Like a, yeah, it felt like a club in there, mm -hmm. um, which is really cool. And I, th the thing I really liked about this one is um, just as an example of collaboration, mm -hmm. like here are two artists that their work is actually quite different. Um, you know, a, a painter and then um, a, a sculptor who does a lot with neon and other light. Um, and it was it was a cool way to like to bring their work together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it would certainly would have been a, a lot of fun to attend. Yeah. Uh, and I think the dance performances and things would have would have drawn people in and and seeing it. Not that we've actually told you which one has won yet, but um, <laughs> let's take it, let's hear a little bit from from Nate and uh, Kim. My mission for the installation that we're talking about is to take the work that I do in two D on canvas and translate it to three D in neon. And so what I'm going to do is choreograph a dance between two people in 64 illustrations. Let's move on to our final artist of the night, and that is uh, Quest, Quest Works is a collaborative. Um, and they put on, I don't know if I really want to describe it or if we want to just like cut to some of the, the video of it or if you want, you want to talk about it. We should, we should just show it and then, okay. and then we can talk a little bit about it because um, I, was pretty, I was pretty blown away by it. We create multimedia installations which blend meditative movement, dance, live painting, scribed arts, photography, music, and sonic resonance to develop sanctuaries in public urban spaces. So this, you know, this is the fourth year that we've done Pitch Night, and this is the first time that there's ever been something that performative where you know, the thing that they were pitching was performance-based, but the, the pitch itself was very much a performance. Mm -hmm. This was like the first time um, where they were really pushing the boundaries. Yeah. Anybody had done that to that level um, with a bunch of performers and props and... Um, costumes. And, and costumes and people wrapped in cellophane and yep. um, pouring water on their hair and stuff like that. It, it's funny because it's like, I, I think that like this, this type of, uh, you know, sort of like med meditative... Um, kind of new age spiritual practice mm -hmm. um, type of work, which is like, uh, only has maybe like one s partial foot in the art world. It's much more like its own thing. Mm -hmm. And I think it's often like um, approached very skeptically from people like in the art world, the sort of traditional kind of gallery art world. Uh, and I was a little skeptical too. I was like, what is this gonna be? Mm -hmm. um, but it was, it was a, this nice experience of like really liking it mm -hmm. despite myself. Uh, which of the five, really quick before we go, just discuss what the winner is. Um, which one do you think is the most ambitious? Boy, um, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. I mean, Nate Schaefer and Kim Wheaton, uh, 
You know, that's a pretty total space transformation. Yeah, transporting neon yeah. sculpture from North yeah. Carolina to Grand Rapids would have been. And controlling good. lighting and sound and, you know, like they're, they're really, it's sort of a total experience. Mm -hmm. um, so that would take quite a bit of work. I mean, um, you know, Stacy Kirby um, is, is kind of like, you know, creating this kitschy um, retro office and then having staffing with a lot of volunteers. Mm -hmm. And so there's a lot going on in that as well. Yeah. Um, well, Ambition in terms of resources is not the sole criteria of what the winner is. So let's take a look and see which of the five uh, artist proposals was selected by the judges. Um, the winner for 2016 Durham Pitch Night is Stacy Kirby. Um, so there you have it. Stacy Kirby is going to be bringing her uh, validation and declaration bureaucracy to Grand Rapids, Michigan for Art Prize 8 in September. Um, I'll be excited to check in with them and see how it's going. Yeah, I, one thing I love about this is that one of the, you know, informative components of it is HB2. It's a North Carolina story, and it's one of the only pitches that I've seen where the artist was doing something based on their locale, telling a story of their locale, sort of. It's yeah. not, you know, over heavy-handed, um, but it's, you know, clearly informed by that as opposed to telling specifically a story about Grand Rapids. That's true. But the story exists in Grand Rapids. So I think like hopefully this this work will um, you know help reveal that and, and raise that dialogue quite a bit here in the state of Michigan as well. Well there you have it. That's uh, Pitch Night Durham, our first one of the season. We have uh, more that are coming down the line. We are going to Minneapolis. We're also going to Louisville and lastly Indianapolis. So four different pieces, each winning a five thousand dollar grant. And the boilerplate pitch night is part of a suite of art prize programming grants programming totally over, totaling over two hundred and eighty thousand dollars in twenty sixteen. So stay tuned to everything that's coming up in the following weeks. We'd like to thank Walker Art Center, Twenty One C Museum Hotels, and Delta Airlines for sponsoring these great events.